This is, uh, yeah, Portland Community College, Black Rock, huge campus here. It's never been worked from what I know. Uh, by the grace of God, that nobody's been here to preach the word. So we're thankful to be here. That we have some students, they've never had anybody preach here. They said, so an opportunity to get the word out. For Christ has not been made. So, anyways, yeah, so, 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 so you got to read the Bible, just submit to what the Bible says, and then you'll be blessed, and uh, God will honor them. You know what I'm saying? So, have your role. God will show your role by His Spirit. They are equal in the sense that there's like, they're not. They're equal in their roles, but it's not like an equal thing where it's like, when you say equal, it's not, it's, it's not like an equality thing where we're trying to be on the same level. It's just everybody's got their role. Man's got a role and a woman's got a role. And so you, they're not equal. I don't know. It's, you can't really put it in that degree where it's either equal because they're all guilty before God. They need a savior, but their roles are different. So, so women, so when you're led by the spirit, okay. God's going to lead you by the spirit to, to, to do his will. And if, you, if you're if you following Christ, you're going to submit to Christ. He's your Lord. So he's going to teach you his word by his spirit to do what he wants you to do. So if, but if a woman is worshiping... God is spirit. You're going to worship in spirit and truth, right? In Christ. Yeah, but they don't... No. What are those who call evil good and good evil? you got to come to Christ. They said Muhammad. It's the same thing. No, Christ is... There's only one God and one mediator between God and man, man. Flee from the wrath to come. You gotta come to Christ. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you're born again. It doesn't mean you're saved. You gotta come to Christ. Well, God doesn't respect any. He's no respecter of persons. And it's, okay, he's no respecter of religions. God doesn't respect people. Not based on any gender, race, religion. He, you, 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 you're, you're out of Christ. You're out of Christ. You're, you're born in Adam. You're sin. You're dead in sins. Woman, male, female. You need to be. You need to be restored to Christ. You need to be born of the Spirit. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you're not a child of God. So, it doesn't mean, so you're not equal. You're under the wrath of God. You're under the, you're, you're under, you're under the holy indignation of God for all the evil you've done to God. And if you don't repent, you'll perish. It doesn't matter what religion so you stand for. Because of, because of the fall of Adam. So you're of the seed of Adam. Through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death has spread to all men because of... So we're all related to Adam. We're, Adam's our federal head, legal representative. So when Adam sinned, the human race sinned in Adam. Christ came, the last Adam, born of a virgin, never sinned to save his seed, so he was born of incorruptible seed, and pass from death to life and become children of God. So only those who are in Christ are eternally secure. Out of Christ, you're in Adam. African, Caucasian, Asian, you're dead in sins, enemy of God, the path of destruction, the wrath of God abides upon you. In Christ, child of God, never coming to judgment, love of God poured in your heart, never to be separated from that love. In Christ. In Christ or out of Christ? Very simple. That's how God, two categories. In Adam, all die. In Christ, all are made alive. Can you talk about repentance? Yeah. Repentance to well, there's a repentance towards God unto life, where one is repentant towards God that's broken before God, and in that, it's saving repentance, right? Where they've come to Christ and been broken before. So now, in that degree, now they're going to continue throughout their life to repent and forsake their sins because they're still going to make mistakes and sin, but God's going to chasten them and bring well, this sin. What is considered a mistake and what is considered a sin? Violation of transgression of God's law. Sin is, uh, one sin is not loving the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So every second of the day. Have to be yeah, so you're going to be sinning every second of the day you breathe, even as a Christian. But see, the difference between those who are in Christ and those who are out of Christ, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Your sins are covered under the grace of God, and it's not going to give you a license to sin. You're going to hate the sin you once loved, and you're going to desire to follow and please Christ. So when God brings no sins of mind, like if you've got an idol in your heart or something you're doing that's, that's ungodly, you're not going to be able to get away with it. God won't allow you. That's the power of God in one's life, and he saves even it. Because if, you, if you become a child of God, God becomes your father. He says, if you're without chastening or discipline, you're not a son of God. You're still, you're still a father. You're still, a, the Bible says in the King James, bastard. Um, so even if you do repent, but if you don't repent enough, there's still a chance that you can go to hell. If you don't repent enough, no. you're not a good Christian. No, that, not at all. You're justified by faith. So study the doctrine of justification. Legally, in a courtroom, you're ju the moment one believes in Christ, he or she is justified. That means, forensically, legally, because of what Christ did. Christ is the only one who lived perfectly on the earth. When he laid down his life on the cross, all the sins of God's people were imputed to him. He bore them in his body under the wrath of God to take the penalty. He was a penal substitute for sinners. So in Christ, the moment you trust Christ, your case is legally dismissed in the courts of God. You you are imputed God with being the judge. God being the judge. He imputes, he credits you with the obedience of Christ. Your sins are nailed to the cross. So now you're in Christ as though you're perfect. God sees you as you've never sinned, remembers your sins no more. Now you're still gonna sin in time because you're in the body. But those sins are gone off your account. 
but the evidence that you're truly justified, that you truly believe, save me, is you're, he's going to sanctify you. You're not going to be you, you're not going to be the same as you were before you trusted in Christ because you have a new nature now. You have a nature that hates sin, you want to love and loves God, that wants to please God. It's new instincts. God and puts that in you because he lives in you by his spirit. That's but nothing to do with religion. Lives in you by your spirit, he it? doesn't sin. You sin in the flesh because you're, your flesh is going to lust against God. But you're not going to continue in sin that grace me, man. You're going to forsake sin. He who has died, how shall he who's died to sin live any longer in it? Okay. So Romans my confusion 6. is if God creates people, that means he's creating sin. God is not the author of any sin. He's created wicked people, but because of the fall, they're in sin. And God uses sin to bring himself the greatest glory. God has made all for himself, yes, even the wicked for the day of evil. God has made all for himself, even the wicked for the day. He raised up Pharaoh to damn his soul to make his mighty power known. So God is sovereign over sin of man and over all the affairs of men to bring himself the greatest glory. You don't talk about women. I'm saying men, men is men and women. When we say men, People, men, women, yeah, that's what it means. All the, that's because that's, that's a language that's used biblically. It's men is men, wi men, women, mankind. So, spend time reading this. Come to Christ. You gotta come to Christ. Hey, should we get the horse? All things are welcome here, no hate, no fear. All things are welcome here, no hate, no fear. The love of Christ that passes knowledge is filled with all the fullness of God. Guys, no praise God. She's no been... fear. All things are welcome here. No hate. Well, baby, you can have one. No fear. All things are welcome here. No hate. No fear. The Bible all says that God hates no all hate. workers. No fear. All things are welcome here. And the day of the Lord will come no as fear. a destruction. All things are welcome here. Jesus teaches love, right? No fear. Well, God is love. Yeah. And so God's love it was demonstrated in the sufferings of Christ to save a people from the sin, but God hates all workers of iniquity. Do you really he abhors, think that he abhors, God wants you to come and yell at people about how they're going to well, They're in great danger of the wrath of God abiding upon. You're in great danger out of Christ. Yes, he does. Of course he does. That's why we're here. God loves people. He's not just going to sin. No, he's coming the second time to kill all of his enemies. He's coming to destroy everything. He's, when, Jesus, when Jesus comes a second time, he's coming to kill. The second coming of Christ... It, 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 the si well, he's coming to kill. He's coming to destroy. He says, well, his love is eternal in Christ. You've got to come to Christ to be in that saving love and never be severed from that. But see, God, when Jesus comes, Trump's on his way to hell. All the, he's not born again either. He says, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, Taking vengeance, Taking vengeance on all those, on all those who, do not know God, who do not know God and on those, and on those who, do not obey who do not obey the gospel of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Of the Lord Jesus he says, Christ. he shall be punished with everlasting destruction oh, from the wait, presence of the Lord and the glory of his power. Could we re re -read that one? So the return of Christ is a day of devastation, a day of destruction of the Almighty. Jesus comes again to render punishment to the proud, to slaughter his enemies. That's why he's coming. The first time he came, he came as the Lamb of God to suffer for his people and be slaughtered on the cross. So only through Christ can you be in the love. This is the love of God, friends. The love of God that passes knowledge. That you can be saved from your horse ways. You can be saved from your idolatrous ways. Saved from your sin. That you're guilty before God. Each one of us has a wicked heart. Each one of us is dead in sins. Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many will go therein. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life. There are few who find it. It is sin that separates from God. God gave the rainbow. God gave the rainbow as a promise that he would not flood the world again with water. It's a reminder that God will destroy it again with fire. That's what the Bible says. That the day, the day of the Lord, the rainbow is a promise. The rainbow is a promise, not perversion. And the rainbow is a reminder that Jesus is coming with fire. 
to judge the world. To judge the world. The rainbow is a promise, not perversion, a promise of God that it would not the Lord Jesus the Christ came into the world to seek and to save that which is lost. There is one God, and there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. A mediator is one who reconciles hostile parties. God is angry with the wicked every day. Scripture says that God hateth all workers of iniquity, that the Lord abhors the bloodthirst and deceitful man. Read that's a great gospel. Do you guys know why you need to be saved? No. Safe? Saved, yeah. Safe or saved? You are in great danger. If you're out of Christ, you're under the wrath of the holy God. He's a consuming fire. He would devour his adversaries. So the day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night. The day of your death, God will require your soul. And so out of covenant with God, out of Christ, there's nothing but recompense due you for the evil you've done to God, the crimes you've committed against God. Everything. Your life of idolatry, your life of anarchy and treachery idolatry. against him. All your life you're born. As soon as you, you go out of the womb, you go you go astray speaking lies as a child. Them in the bungle. Yeah, you have an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. You're evil to the core. Nature is a human being. You love evil <laughs> rather than good. We are abominable and filthy, wretched creatures What's wrong with from that? the fall of man. Everything's wrong with that because God is holy and he requires. And think about how good he is to you now and the more wrath you're heaping up upon yourself by uh, by rejecting the law of the Lord of hosts, despising his gospel and hardening your heart. This is God's love and mercy manifest to you right now yes. on your campus to turn you from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. To it's nature for us to do these things. Well, it, it, it is your nature to do these things. You are born with that nature. Exactly. You're, you, you know more than a lot of even professing believers. The nature of man is corrupt to the core. Why? Because the fall of man. You in, you're inherited of that nature. So we need, to, we, need to be, we need to be partaking of the divine nature. That's only something God can give. It's his nature. So that way, when he changes the nature, he changes your instincts, your desires, your appetites, your affections for the things of the world to the things of God. He changes them into... Oh, yeah. Hey, did you get one of these, man? No, thank you. You need, to come, you need to come to Christ. No one is good but one that is God. Are you born in the Spirit? That's even worse, man. That's even worse. Do you know why? Because you're, you're, you're adding the work of Christ. You're blaspheming God through re-sacrificing and offering Christ Jesus, who suffered once for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. You're offering him as a repeated sacrifice, eating him through the abomination of the mass. Man, that's devastating. That is devastating. Damn it, it's blasphemous. But man, you gotta come to the true and living God, the eternal Son of God. He's the only mediator. He suffered once for sins forever. The just for the unjust, the innocent for the guilty, one God. Your sins can be forgiven, ma'am, and you'll be declared righteous before God through faith alone in Christ. You come to the cross. You come to Christ. Don't trust in any other gods. No other God's going to save you. God is not a beast, not a man that he should lie. He is a holy God. He's a creator of all things. And to know him is eternal life. Not just know about him, not academic ascent. You learn a lot about history. You learn a lot about things on camp. You learn a lot about everything. But do you know... The Lord your God, have you come into a saving relationship with the eternal God in the heavens who created all things for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom belong the glory forever and ever. He says, give glory to the Lord your God before he cause darkness and your feet stumble on the dark mountains. And when you're looking for light, he turns it into the shadow of death and into gross darkness. You see, this says to the proud that continue in rebellion, go their own way. He calls, you don't answer. He speaks, you don't hear. In the day of your calamity, he will show you the back and not the face. He'll hide his eyes from you. He'll, hear, he'll hide his ear from your cry. Read Proverbs 1 again as, he, as, as wisdom cries aloud and raises her voice in the open squares. says, how long? You simple ones, you love simplicity. For scorners, delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Turn in my rebuke. Surely I'll pour my spirit upon you. I'll make my words known to you. But because I have called and you refuse, I've stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you've disdained all my counsel. And would have none of my rebuke, I also will laugh at your calamity. He says, I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm and your desolation comes like a whirlwind. And he says, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. 
They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. They despise all my counsel, none of my reproof. Therefore, I will laugh at their calamity. He says, they'll eat the fruit of their own way. They'll be filled to the full of their own fancies. Friends, that is a sobering passage of Scripture in Proverbs chapter 1. That is when God sends a general call through his messengers and they scorn and mock and they don't come. He calls, he shows you his glory, makes himself manifest, declaring his glory. Look around you. His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So they're without excuse. But we harden our hearts. We suppress the truth. We heap up greater condemnation upon ourselves. And that time will come. That's what he's saying in that proverb. That he will harden your heart. He will turn you and he will reprobate you and manifest that reprobation in time. To show. To harden so that he would be glorified in your destruction except you repent. So the scripture's talking about you cry out. He won't listen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Today if you will hear his voice don't harden your hearts. As in the rebellion. For the Lord God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Yeah, yes, he gives grace to the humble. So we humble ourselves by recognizing internally we're broken before God. We're contrite before God. We're sorry to God. We live for other gods. The one true God who gave you breath and life in all things. You surrender to him. You embrace his son as the only sacrifice to save you. Your only hope to save you from the wrath to come and restore your soul and bring you back to God. That is knowing him. You come to Jesus to be reconciled to God. You do it today. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow is promised to no man. But the day of the